and illustrators, Katie here. I'm gonna help you paint the edges of your book. We're using hard covers today. And we're gonna talk about some of the tools that I like to use. So first and foremost, 98 cents or 97 cents at Joann's. You want the inch uh, paintbrush. It's kind of a foam brush, but you can also get them in a larger size if you want to cover more space or if you have a bigger book. I also recommend using a much smaller paintbrush. Could be square tip. I like these because they can get in between the books. And we're gonna talk about that later because getting into here is a lot easier with this than the foam brush. Let's see. You're gonna need at least a tape. Realistically, you don't wanna use scotch tape too much. Um, it's very adhesive, very sticky. But if you're very careful on how you fold your paper, you can get away with using painter's tape. Although if you're using it on a foil or if you have any kind of soft papered top, this will peel it off. So don't stick it to the book directly. Otherwise, if you can, buy uh, frog tape. I didn't buy any, I don't care to use it. It's about $8 a roll. It's not super expensive, but that's also not inexpensive for tape. But if you do end up getting it, frog tape is recommended for those of you doing spray paint or airbrushing, as it can get around all the little creases much better than this will without peeling it. Um, you're gonna need a cup for your water. I've already put water in it, so I'm not gonna tip it over. Paint brushes need a towel or rag or paper towel to dry on. Um, if you have one of these, great. It's a little palette for your paint. If not, you can use a paper plate, plastic plate, any kind of thing that you don't care about. You could do it on your dishware, but some people don't wanna put paint on that. We're gonna talk real quick about the clamps that I use. Now, I bought a four pack, which means I can do two books at a time, very quick turnover. Um, I like the six inch clamps, preferably because it has a flatter surface, much more forgiving, and it's a lot easier to use because I can just, in one hand, close it up and then it's got a little release here that lets it go really quick. Um, I like it better than the twist tie ones that you find at Home Depot because those are like a screwdriver. You have to twist on and twist off and that can get kind of exhausting. Um, for those of you who are brand new to using acrylic paints, I would say you do want two cuts of cardboard. Now you'll see here, I've already tested some of my paint, wrote down the name on it so I can remember what the hell I'm looking at. And it gives me an idea of what the paint looks like. If you bought any metallics, how shiny it is. If you bought any glitters, like that's a metallic purple, what it looks like. Um, the brown is nice too, because it shows up a lot better, I think, than on white paper. And it's thicker, so I can take it. Paint tends to get really wet and soft. Um, there's a lot of paint that I use, and I recommend, honestly, um, Apple Barrel brand. It's the same as Martha Stewart's paint. Don't let them fool you. You want it in the two ounce bottle, they're shakeable, much easier. And depending on if you're buying other brands or if you're like me, you can very easily put a little dollop on top and remember that that's what it looks like when it's dried. So that's my navy blue. I didn't do that to all of them because it's clear on the bottle so you can see it. But then you have other brands. Uh, let's see, you have Deco Art Sheen, super shiny. It will give you some indication on the top of the sticker. Like this one is my rose quartz. I think I bought it for, oh, was it Queen of Nothing or Quill Print, something. They had a pink on one of them and it was really pretty. Um, I love the metallics. I know Bianco was using the Art Deco Dazzling Metallics. Very good. Also typically comes with a sticker on top to let you know the color. But the, the sticker also with the label has pretty good indication of what it's going to be. But they, they don't all look the same. If you happen to buy Americana, that's also a very good use. Same as Apple brand, same kind of quality. Two fluid ounces, shakeable. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's much easier. If for whatever reason you don't know what the color really looks like while you're at the store, you can pull the top off and give it a quick look-see. Because sometimes they have a little plastic on. I know some of mine still do, so I didn't open all of my bottles. Black I found to be the most useful with red. A lot of book covers tend to be pulling that a lot lately, so we're gonna probably paint with those today. But I'm a fan of glitter. So when you're buying them, you can get them in any kind of color. Now, it'll give you a number across the front. This one is Dragonfly Glaze. Super love it as a top coat. I bought a couple others. Um, this one is the red to like purple, so you'll see it kind of change to like a blue purple in that family. This one goes from the purple to the teal to the green, very pretty. This one's just the rainbow, so it's kind of got every color in it. So if you don't know what you want, you don't want to get too close, man, I love this one. Highly recommended. 
you're gonna wanna water it down. So just a little bit of water goes a long way with these because the more wet your brush is, the more the pages will soak in that water. And if you like that effect, it looks great when they're open. If you're doing two-tone, like I painted one that was purple, very watered down, sucked into that. So when it's open, the book looks purple. But when closed, it had more of a gold tint to it. So really, just practice on some books. Go to you know Goodwill, use used books, anything that you're comfortable with the first couple times because you don't want it to get damaged. Now, I brought two copies with me today so that we can talk about how to wrap the book. You have a white and a red. Now, of course, you're always going to take off the dust jacket first. We don't want to get these dirty, but it gives you a good indication. Do you want to match the cover? Do you want to match when it's off? Like this one's in a black on white, so it'd be very easy to paint this black. I think black looks great on these kinds of things, but I might go red because on the other issue, on the first book, Blood of Neverland, this is book two, I think. The other one is book one. Um, it's on a red cover with white lettering. So you could leave this one white because it's already very pretty against it, but I might be painting this one black. So if this one's painted black, then the other one painted red is gonna look super good. Um, so we're gonna do that. Let me get the camera set up. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and wrap the books. So you're gonna take some tape, you might want to peel off a couple pieces when you get ready to get started. Sorry, excuse me. You put them somewhere safe. Typically I use about two. Now, everybody wraps things differently. So I like to skip the first page because sometimes they don't like to get painted and they move around a lot. So you're just gonna have to spend some time working with the paper, tucking it as far in as you possibly can, laying some pressure on it to keep it folded. Now, notice I haven't used any tape yet. We're still just getting this set up. Did it move any? No, I don't think it did. So I might use one here just to keep the pressure even on the paper. And now, kind of pull it together. I like a piece here, keeps it kind of flat. I might need a third one. Now notice I haven't used the paper and the tape anywhere other than on each other. I don't typically like to put it on the book in case it peels, but you'll notice that we don't have it going all the way to the edge. So again, this half inch, I'm gonna paint by hand with my little brush. So let's do the other side. I also found you can get about one, two uses max per piece of paper on your book, but realistically, once they get wet, they kind of start to get degraded and problematic, and you don't want it to stick to your book because it will stick to your book. Pa newspaper, notoriously, like paper mache, once wet, will start to stick to something. And you can probably remove it, but you don't want to damage it with it, so better safe than sorry, right? So we'll just tuck it in real close. Keep good steady pressure them together. There we go. So now we've got everything wrapped nice and pretty. You can see that it's nice and clean along these edges. This is not if you had frog tape, you would take little tiny tears and start to fill this part in. If you're spray painting, you wanna make sure you cover all of this and all of that and the underside as well because you will be spraying everything, even if it's an airbrush. Now, the reason I like the clamps so much, I like the clamps so much is because not only are they easy, but watch, you're just gonna stick it on anywhere that you want. I typically like to go towards the corners, it makes it a little bit easier and they are movable. You don't have to keep them in one spot, but notice that even when clamped, I can pick it up and move it. If you're using a weight on top of your book, you're pretty much stuck at hunching over, trying to paint these edges all the way around, unless you find a way to pick it up and move it, but the weight will come off of it and you want continuous even pressure. Now also notice, I didn't put the cardboard on. I found that it really doesn't make a difference unless you're using maybe a spray paint or an airbrush. But again, if you were, you would be covering all of your sides. Now, I'm not gonna bother putting it on, 
but you could if it bothers you. So this one, we decided we were gonna paint black. So the other one is gonna be red. I also recommend starting with your lighter colors and working your way in, but you can always get more paint later and you can clean your water cup later. But I found that if you start from lights to darks, it's a little bit easier. So we'll just get a little dollop in, a little brush first, a little bit of water. I've got a paper towel here that I'm using to kind of dab off of it. Now, I'm gonna bring the camera closer so you can get a better look. Best here, so we're gonna have our little edge here. Get a nice little amount of paint and just very gently Take your time going into this area. Now you're gonna bring in your brush. And again, you might wanna wet it just a little bit. Start a little light, and I found I like to go down the edges first. So you can see that the brush has a little bit more water than I intended, because you can see it kind of watering here, but that's okay. You're gonna go over it maybe once, maybe twice, a couple of times. You want a nice even coat. So now that we've done all of our edges, that's all of it. So now that we've done all of our edges, that's all of it. And we did the other side. You're gonna take it off very gently and you're gonna just move it to the other side. So now we're going to paint the center. Very. Make sure you clamp it a little tight. You don't want it super tight. So now we're gonna paint down the center.
If you have a particular spot that you can't get the brush in, that's why I recommend a little tiny one, because sometimes the corners don't want to be your friend. And you want to get in there nice and easy. Clean it up. Now, I recommend taking it off. Of course, you might want to put down a little paper towel or something for your workspace if you don't want to get paint everywhere. Although a dot here and there is not going to hurt you. So I like to take it I like to open it up. You'll see that one of the pages got stuck to the cardboard. That's not a problem because if you're very gentle, you can peel it up, but you'll see that while it's wet, it wants to stick to it. So you have to be very gentle. I like to just kind of tug on it. We'll leave it there for right now. We'll come back later. That one also has a page stuck to it. Doesn't want to close. Now, I like to use a hair dryer to dry everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. So now that it's totally dry, I'm going to set my paint aside. You're going to want to put it back into the water. That's why I have two brushes, because while one is sitting and soaking, I've got another one that I can use. That'll probably be for my black one. So I've totally dried it. I've peeled off the back and the front. Now, you want to make sure this is totally dry, because you do have to kind of make sure that it comes apart. So I like to take it and just take the corners and kind of separate them doing that. Just a quick corner there now. Again, you'll notice that you only really got one line of color, but because it was a little wet, I got a little bit of it soaking through. But I don't really mind that too much because we can always touch it up later if it really bothers us. So I'm going to take off the paper. And now this is the hard part. So now you've got a quick look at what my edges look like with just the book closed. I haven't put the dust jacket on. You're going to have to sit here and at some point start going through all the pages because remember, it's stick. It's sticky. So this is stuck together. Now, as long as it's dry, you'll be able to go in between a page and very gently take your time going down the page. You might have to go from a couple different angles, get your finger in there really good so that you can get a lot of clearance. Now we've got one page open. Now I'm going to do it again, maybe not that side. I seem to have a better luck if I go from the bottom up than I do from the top down. It tends to want to tear. So we've got a second page. Now you're going to do this and it's going to be a while. You want to take your time, be patient. Otherwise, you could very easily damage your book by ripping the pages. Now when you're done and you close it, sometimes you get these little tiny frays. I don't see them yet. I've only done a couple pages. But if you do, reclamp it really quick. Get a little bit of paint, not a whole lot, and I mean like a very little amount, and just do a quick wipe down, again, of all the sides, let it dry, touch it up, and it'll pretty much cover any imperfections that you have. So, okay. So pretty much be comfortable using any paint that you want. I have a bunch of examples. This one I'm gonna go ahead and open up. It's gonna take a while, so I'm not gonna subject you to me peeling back every page, but you saw a couple of them to give you a good example. You can throw the dust packet jack on if it really bothers you. This should be the Queen of Hearts one, just so you can get a quick look what it would look like once the dust jacket is on. I think that looks pretty amazing, pretty good. I might not paint the other one right now, I might paint it later, but don't be afraid of color. I tend to use a lot of blues. This one had this beautiful neon green. If I could have matched this orange, I probably would try that as all also, but I didn't want to go neon, so I went with this other type of green, quite honestly, crisp apple, apple barrel. Nothing fancy, no metallics, no glitter, but when it's open, man, that looks sick. Um, let's see. My Kingdom of Ash did it in the black with the glitter. I don't know if you can really see it on the video, but it's 
highly sparkly, very pretty. I'm gonna do this probably to all of my Sarah J Mask books with the glitter. Paint's blendable. So for like Rebel, I did a type of blue and the purple magenta mix with just a hint of white so that you could get it. Now what I love is if you can see this, bring the light over, if you can see this, the book itself has purple ink, so it kind of matches. And I love how that happens. Uh, let's see. If you're using silver, be careful what kind of silver, because I have two. So my Fallen Kingdoms copy first got done with the darker silver to give it that color, and then I put the lighter silver that had the sheen on it on top. I think it looks amazing. For reference, um, let me see if I can find the bottle. My metallic paint gold. I did scythe with that. I did one coat. It looks a lot lighter in person. Matches almost like this coloring here, like an aged book, but it does have a bit of that shine and sheen with that glitter on it because the metallics do kind of glitter. Um, but if you want something a little darker, this one, my copy of Serpent and Dove, because look at how beautiful these colors are, right? It's like a warmer tone gold, kind of like a copper, but I put a coat of rose gold on first, then I let it dry, peeled all the pages, then I did a copy of the gold on top, peeled all the pages, and it gave me this much warmer tone. Let me see if I can put them by next to each other. So one's a little warmer than the other, two tones, very good. Experiment a little. You don't have to just buy one type of paint. You can buy any type of paint of any type of brand. It'll get the work done, and it's all gonna look really good. Something worth noting. Besides your page thickness, because again, you want to make sure you don't rip them when you paint, my copy of Four Dead Queens, the top is flat and smooth, as is the bottom, but the pages on the side have that ridged edgeness, almost like it's handmade paper or it's been torn. It's very pretty. I would not paint this. You might be able to get away with painting this if you did an airbrush because it's aerated, sprayed air. Paint out of a can or a canister like spray paint, I would not recommend because it's really much thicker and might not get in between all of these ridges. I don't know if you can see them. I wouldn't risk it. So some pages and some books really probably aren't meant to be painted. And that's okay. You just have to know what you're working with. Another one I did was We Hunt the Flame. Can't wait to read this. It looks so good. I did it in a navy blue with a touch of that purple, but I used one of the purple glitters that I have, I think. I think it was this one. I'm not 100% because I don't remember it having any of the, but it could, it could have been this one. It could have gone from the red to the purple because it's really pretty. I don't think there's any green in it. So it gives me this kind of like pink, glittery touch of everything. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty in person. I love it. Now I learned that the painter's tape that I was using peels books when I did my Heartless. Now. The cover has this foil and it started to peel off down here at the bottom when I tried to put tape along this edge to like clip it. And then I realized, oh dear, I don't want the paint to peel off my metallic edging or foiling. So you do have to pay attention to where that tape is going. That's why in the tutorial, I only showed you how to tape up on the paper. Don't worry about ripping it. It's newspaper. Use as much as you need. Um, that's totally fine. I think it looks really good sometimes without metallics or without glitters because some things are just meant to be matte and I think that looks really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and paint my other book. I'm gonna do it in black and I'll probably post a picture at the end, all right? Uh, oh, doesn't hurt to also have Elmer's glue. I don't know if you'll ever need it. Sometimes a book needs a little bit of dot of glue to come back together because sometimes things don't get glued properly along the spine and I had that happen with my Kingdom of Ash. There was like an insert that I didn't wanna lose. Um, it was like some sort of advertisement or something. It had like a card that you could pop out and I decided, you know what, I don't wanna remove it. So I just kind of eat a little bit of glue along just the paper and stuck it back in. There's other methods I would have probably tried if I could have found it. I could not find it. Um, again, try it on a book that you're not a super big fan of. Have a little bit of fun. Uh, my House of Salt, I did it again in that blue. It looks really good, almost like a teal in person. I don't think it's capturing it on the camera, but I put just a, again, if you take a metallic or a glitter and you put it in your water when it's clear, you'll get that mixture on your brush as you paint. So if you want just a touch of glitter or a touch of the metallic without wetting your brush too much, wet it, squeeze all the water out, and then just run it down with no other paint on it, and it should catch all of that on there. Um, kind of did it with this, with the metallic silver, the lighter one, but then I took my napkin and I just kind of rubbed it off to get a little bit more so you could see the color coming through. Didn't want to lose it. 
The only other example I have is winter wood. I got this one already sprayed and painted from Owl Crate. Now this one was not painted, so I painted it green. You can see a color difference. This is a little more soft matte, but they did a very good job. Mine is the green, completely love it. Um, then I have, you know, Rebel, which is my purple. So you can kind of see the difference. Not a whole lot is between what you buy and what someone else sprays and what you do yourself. You just have to have patience. Take it slowly. You want less water, less is better. You want it dry. If it gets wet, it tends to seep into the pages. It'll make it sticky. The newspaper will stick to things. And in an effort to keep this really video much shorter, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. So we hope to see you Saturday. Post some pictures, hashtag us on Instagram, Pennyless Readers. We wanna see what you're coming up with. Happy painting. Mm -hmm.